The culture tab is basically all about being a actress in general. Basically all of these except one specific one which has its own specific title. Um, have little benefits. And most of these are indeed renaissance texts. First hand, you've got aesthetics which are indeed priority 3. Prestige gain is always good and a lot of these are actually used for um, decisions. Specifically in um, the USA and South Africa. They have technologies that can help you there. Um, they also have three little inventions, mostly each. If you're the first to discover them, then you'll get a huge bonus out of it, not so much if you're after that. It's a good idea to rush for romanticism to start off a game, if you want a lot of prestige. It came with medicine. But as I said, I'll get to explaining inventions a little later, and I'll tell you about why that's sometimes not a very good idea. Philosophy is your priority one tree. Priority number one text all of these. As soon as they pop up, drop, well not drop what you're doing if it's another priority one, but in essence, you want to drop what you're doing and get these ASAP. I mean, the only reason you shouldn't, if it's nationalism and imperialism, or machine guns, or to an extent freedom of trade, these help out your research points. More research points you have, the better. And they stack with each other. So eventually, you have 450% research rates, plus the small bonuses you get from that anyway. All really important, and the earlier you get them, the, the earlier they will come into effect, and if they're really good investments. Social thought um, increases your education efficiency. It's kind of philosophy's younger brother, and indeed a priority two tree here. Um, basically, they're used for a few decisions, but not that many. So, if you just want to get more literacy faster, which is also a major contributor to your technology research rate, but I'll be d explaining more of that more with the populations chapter, um, so go through this. Political thought, it really depends on what kind of country you are, for what, if you want political thought or not. If you're a civilization, especially secondary power or above, um, then you definitely want to dabble in political thought. First hand, more national focuses. Second hand, look at all these technologies. Look at all these. They increase your plurality, which, as a commenter has said, also increases research rate. I don't recommend gunning, like, gunning straight for these. In fact, because one of the other things that plurality does is somewhat increase your revolt risk, and even then, it could be a gamble which never pays off, because I've actually had some of the ideological thought technology still locked at the end of the game, having researched it really early. But there's one major thing in this little category, and that is this. This is the most important technology in the entire game. This is the most important technology in the entire game. Don't let this one pass. This is required for over half the decisions in the game, for one thing. Makes it easier to colonize for another thing. And, in fact, it'll give you more events to actually start conquering your neighbors. And one of the needle things it'll do is that if, a, if an uncivilized nation is small enough, under um, five states, then you can flat out annex it for the same cost it would be as if it were one state instead of having to eat them up little piece by little piece. This is the most important technology in the game. They also do things like inc like war, war exhaustion, increase colonial migration, and give you more colonial prestige. This is the most important technology in the game. The only downside is the whole technology I've been hovering over the past few seconds now, and that is it'll get you more nat nationalistic Rebels which are more likely to succeed. But this is the most important technology in the game. Always, always, always make an attempt to get it as early as you can. 
Perhaps not before that year's, um, actually no, it doesn't get a philosophy deck that year, so just try and gun for it in 1850 if you're not trying to go for a militaristic. Otherwise, just gun for it as fast as you can. Anyway, industry is basically just that. If you're running a highly industrial nation and want to get started, this is the place for you. However, there are other things in here that are that admittedly have less to do with industry, but are uh, basically your other technologies. First hand, you've got your power, which is a priority two here. The later ones give you a lot of good inventions. Um, the aeroplanes and automobiles are pretty important. Um, and one other thing that they'll do is that they'll increase mining and farming output as well as factory throughput, which is basically how efficient they are at making things out of what they get. So basically, this is this is like having a, a miniature freedom of trade every technology, especially with practical steam engine and on. But on the other hand, some of them require that you've already discovered some technology, so some of these can actually be forced to, del to be delayed later on. Mechanization is basically Renaissance text galore for the f first few, and basically just industrial only past the uh, semi well, past interchangeable pots here. Um. Mechanical production especially will basically just hike your output of common goods a lot and that can really help help you especially if you're gunning for a monopoly on some of these things. Though getting a monopoly on grain the most common resource well the second most common resource will be basically impossible. But this will help you a lot if you're relying on imports, which will allow you to set tariffs higher later on, which in turn gives you more money for essentially the same amount, which is good. Besides that, though, they don't have the miniature, the miniature freedom of trade Buddha, bo yeah, Buddhas, the miniature freedom of trade bonuses that uh, the power tree will give you. So take it if you're doing industry or if you at least got some factories. Otherwise, maybe it's not so much worth your time except for shift work. Metallurgy. You can understand if you want metallurgy or not. Question, are you, do you own, or are you gunning for provinces that have coal, steel, iron, etc., or do you have some decisions that need some of these? If the answer is yes, then get it. There's basically no reason to even dabble in here at all without the, well, unless you're trying to get civilized, unless you have some resources to get some of these things somewhere, which some countries don't start out with, so metallurgy is just all where you are. If you have these things, go for them. If not, then keep away. Infrastructure is a priority to tech. Having railroads basically helps a lot. They're basically just complete upgrades to provinces. Um, they're not, they're kind of the lowest of your priority to techs, but they're still important in their own right. Finally, chemistry and electricity. These are also priority two techs right above experimental railroad. The again mostly Renaissance techs. They increase your supply limit, and as you can see, medicine here has has a lot of inventions that help you with the realm with attrition, growth, population growth, and most importantly, prestige. So this is another one. This is another tech to gun for if you're going for an early prestige boost. That's especially helpful for nations like Texas or such that start out as single state powers. Um, electricity is another very important tech, I'd say about number six, just because of the inventions it gives you. For one hand, it gives you telephone factories, and even if you're not industrial, if you can gun it to electricity and just start putting those out right away, that will help you a lot. Because, um... The AI is actually kind of slow about developing new industries, so if you can take a large share of the market before competition starts up, that will help you a lot. See what the Americans pretty much did with, with the telephone at the time. Um, beyond that, um, that's basically your stuff. 
So, I'll, I'll come back in a jump cut to talk to you about inventions. In the time you've all forgone, I researched medicine. And now, as soon as I start that thing, you can see down here we have inventions readily available. Inventions can be very good things or very bad things. You can organize them by where they're from, their name, or their percentage. Inventions tend to have a low percentage to actually go off, but the the low percentage is every month. So essentially, for the most part, you're going to be getting a lot of these. However, there is basically no determination whether you get these as soon as you as soon as you discover the technology, or like eight years afterward. Um. There's a little more to it than that, so that's technology and your budget for you, folks. Um, next week, well, I'm not sure what I'll talk about, since I already kind of covered national focuses, so see you next time, folks. That was the longest fucking...